Hi guys, so today I'm going to work a little bit more on my doll's house. Um, I am going to be going into the other room to focus on doing the fireplaces. I've got two fireplaces that I want to do today. But first off, I had a couple of comments on my previous video suggesting how I could fix my bouncy roof. So I'm going to go get a screwdriver and try loosening up these screws and hopefully it will mean I'll be able to actually shut my roof properly rather than it bouncing around in midair. So a big thank you to the crazy cat and Cara Jansen because it now works. It's not banging anywhere. It's sitting on there nice and flush now. Literally all I did was I went and unscrewed those little screws up there slightly. So it is a little bit like it's wobbly but it's attached if that makes sense. I thought it would have to be like really really solid um, like really really tight but apparently that's what was stopping it from closing down nicely so I'm really really pleased that was a super quick fix I thought I may have to take everything out and start again so thank you very much to you two people another reason why I'm so pleased that I'm documenting um, making this doll's house because it's little bits of knowledge like that that can really affect the whole process of this um, I probably would have been annoyed and frustrated about this roof for a long time if I hadn't had um, this knowledge from you guys so thank you very very much for those suggestions because it worked very nicely so now I'm gonna go ahead and have a think about how I'm gonna decorate my little fireplaces so I'm gonna definitely paint them black but I think I'm gonna add a few little details to them and think about as well how I can actually put the fire on the inside bit um so i'm gonna come away from my doll's house for a bit and do this in the other room just so i have a bit more space um but just to remind you do one in the dining room but i'm gonna mainly be working on the two that go in this room um and then in the cozy little study room so i want this one to look extra cozy and this one maybe to look a little bit more fancy okay so i'm currently just printing some stuff out um to use for this um, but first off, um, I'm going to make the bit around the fireplace. So I've got this bit that obviously goes up against the wall. But if you look at a fireplace, it doesn't just kind of end like that. Um, it does have like a bit that goes around. So I was trying to figure out how to do it. Um, a lot of like the pre-bought ones, um, people just kind of stick straight there. Um, I was going to like print out a picture of a fire, but I wanted it to look relatively realistic. So I thought about how I could do it and I figured I could make like a little surround bit out of wood so basically i got this piece of dowel um it, it's just from up in the shed so didn't buy it um but it's probably uh i'd say about a centimeter um thick and i cut them just very very roughly to size so i think i'm gonna have it to sort of look like this with a longer bit across the front so it'll kind of end up looking like that and then here i can get like little tools maybe a cauldron or something in there um to make it look kind of more realistic and i'm hoping as well like it does stand up on itself but it is very wobbly so i'm hoping by gluing this it'll give it a bit more strength now to make it look a little bit more 3d obviously i can't kind of cut into the wall but i printed out this picture and i looked for ages for like pre um like designed ones specifically for this but i couldn't find any but i literally just found a picture of a fireplace um i like kind of cropped out most of it because i didn't need it but i figured if i glue that like that it's going to give the illusion that it kind of goes further back and then right at the bottom you can see it has those gray tiles so i've literally just printed out um some sheets of gray tiles these actually it is on um double sided paper I do get everything on recycled paper just because it is easier um, but these are just kind of grey tiles and I figured that I'd be able to kind of put them in the surround area like that to make it look a little bit more realistic um, and it also fit in with the grey tiles on the backing piece so I've got my glue gun here to the side of me um, and it's been heating up for a little while so hopefully it is hot enough now so what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to glue gun these together um, obviously you could kind of take a lot of time sanding them and making them look really nice um, I was thinking of like making the edges kind of angled so that they fitted together really nicely at a 90 degree angle but it's going to take a while and I want this to be like a relatively quick craft I'm hoping just to make blobs and to like stick these like to the blob so that it kind of looks almost ornate and then I'm going to paint it all black at the end so you won't be able to hopefully see the difference between the actual glue and the wood I 
really important to try and get like this 90 degree angle here just so it still will go up nicely against the wall. So now I'm going to add the kind of other little details to it. The best first to paint these. Um, I did add like little black back confetti just to the bottom bits just to like spruce it up a little bit and make it look a bit more spooky so i'm going to paint this all black hopefully i'll just be able to use my usual water based paint um but i'm not sure how well it will go over the glue gun so i may have to use a black acrylic but i will let you know so i'm going to paint all of this first um i have got some of these swirly wood um this one has a bit of glue on it there you go um which i got um from i think i got it from the works a while ago i did show them um in a previous video and i was thinking maybe for at least one of these it would look quite nice to stick them either side to give it a more of an ornate look but it'll be very difficult to paint underneath them so i think i'm going to paint this first and then i will paint these separately and then glue them on afterwards Okay, so I've been thinking about how I can make like a guard to go around the fire. So these bits are just drying, they've been painted black. Um, I painted these swirly whirly bits grey because I thought they would go quite nicely. And then obviously I'm going to put the grey tars in so it should go with that quite nicely. So um, I was basically thinking how I could make a guard to kind of come out in a sort of semicircle around like this part of the fireplace. Um, so I thought I'd try and make it out of hot glue. Um, I haven't seen any tutorials of this at all, so I'm not sure how well it will work. Um, but I assume it's not going to come straight off of the actual like plastic thing. I'm going to base it around this. Um, so I've got some cling film. I'm just going to put cling film around the top of this. The thing of this glue gun is like um, it's quite an old one, and it doesn't. It seems it doesn't. And it does seem, it doesn't matter how long I leave it, it still feels quite hard to get the um, the glue out. So I'm just going to do it slowly but surely and hopefully it won't be all for nothing. Okay, so I'm not too sure how well that went. Um, it was very kind of tricky to do, just because like as I turned around, I kept accidentally like putting it down on the paper. Um, I honestly don't know how well this would have turned out. I always say with these videos, these are not tutorials. This is just me messing around, seeing what I can make. Um, so this side of the thing didn't work at all. So I'm just gonna try and remove it from this side definitely not dry yet it's still very warm yeah it's still quite warm I'm just gonna leave that for a second longer so this is how it turned out it's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be I was able to trim down quite a lot of it. If it was to have my little fireplace um it could just slot in like this um so i think it would look relatively good once it was painted but <laughs> so it did work but <laughs> i just found this wire um i got my pliers here so i thought maybe i could attempt at making it out of wire and see if it looks better and then out of the two i'm going to decide which one to use guys it's been a very tricky last couple of hours i spent this whole time trying to work out how to make this thing literally is three hours since i last filmed um I tried that, which was kind of okay, made out of glue, like out of the hot glue, but when I painted it, it looked awful. Um, I then used the wire, um, I tried various different techniques, um, I then tried this one with like a silver tape, and it just didn't work. 
I then went downstairs in the hunt for like something else I could use, like something completely different. And I found like some plastic forks and I cut the tops off. So like I was going to use that and paint it, but it just looked really silly. So I kind of cleared my head and I came up with maybe using a baking tray. So I've got like a disposable like metal one and I figured I could just cut out like a chunk of it and then just bend it and I'm not going to worry too much about like putting the holes in because it's just going to drive me insane otherwise. I think if anyone had been spending this long making one little part of a thing you would understand but I'm hoping that I'll able, yeah I should just be able to bend this round and it looks like it's going to fit. I'm so happy. So I'm going to make a couple of these now. Okay, so basically um, I've hot glued that silver bit on the front and then I've painted it black um, and then scrubbed it kind of off. So kind of given it an aged look and I've done the same on both of them. So now I'm going to go and add the bricks on the back and the tiles on the floor. So I've added the um, kind of stone bits to it, so I've added the tiles to the bottom and the bricks to the back. So I've just left that to dry, I've put a bit of black paint just around the outsides just so you can't basically see the difference between the card and the wood itself. I did also stick on those little um, grey swirly bits, so I did want to put some bunting or something like that on the actual fireplace itself. But I thought I'd add some cute little bats just as like an additional detail to that swirly whirly bit. So I was just going to use some like grey or white confetti bats but I think I'm going to stick with this same shape of bat which I used for the little bits at the front um, but try and paint it grey because then it will sort of fit in with the two colour schemes which I'm going for on this. So I'll let those dry and then I'll stick them on. So now I'm going to start thinking about what I can put on the actual um, fireplaces. So as I said, I thought maybe I could do some bunting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print out some cute little triangles. Um, and I think it will just be a case of making bunting how you would normally. Um, so cutting out the little shapes um, and putting some thread through them. So I'm just going to look up here. I have been looking on Instagram earlier to see if I could find... Um, I was kind of looking for like pictures of Halloween Halloween fireplaces so I could get some ideas and they basically were mainly like pumpkins um, and candles and things so I'm going to make some little candles to go on there um, but I'm just going to see if I can find some cute little Halloween bunting that's like available just to print out so I'm just going to put in Halloween bunting print um, there you go, there's lots of different ones on here. So we've got this really cute one that actually says Happy Halloween when you cut it out. So I think, um, what other ones have they got here? Oh, this is cute. This one has a little ghost on it. Trick or treat. And it looks like it may say Happy Halloween. I'm just going to visit the page. Because sometimes with these you get a picture, um, which is always like the finished product. And then when you go to the page it gives you like the whole thing which you can print out. Um, it literally says download here, well done. Okay, so here are all the flags. There's six pages worth. Oh cute, so they've got different um, different little designs. So there's that one, which is quite nice, but I am still drawn to this one. I feel like this one will fit a bit nicer with the colour scheme. I'm gonna see how this goes. I'd like to have like a happy Halloween bunting and then I'd also like a bat one as well. I can't print it like how it is, so I'm just going to print screen and then shrink it down and then hopefully it'll be the right, hopefully it'll be the right size for the doll's house. Um, so again, it's just going to take a little bit of fiddling, um, get those the same size. So they'll be, that'll be the actual size it'll be in real life. I think that may be a little bit too big still, so I'm going to make them a bit smaller. And then I'm going to print those out and 
hopefully they'll be okay. While that's been clean, I'm going to go have dinner just because it's getting quite late. Hopefully by the time I come back, these little bats will be dry, I can stick them on. I may just clear off this whole surface because it's an absolute mess now down here. Um, and kind of start like fresh, get some new paper um, and just create a nice working space. Working with so much rubbish can be really annoying sometimes. So I'll see you very shortly. Okay, so I've cleared off the surface and started again. Um, I decided to clear away the bats that I painted. <laughs> back them. I did try and retrieve them but they were too far gone so I just painted a couple more hence why this corner has already got stuff in um, and I printed off the little bunting. The only thing I'm unsure about is how I'm gonna stick it on there just because you know just because normally bunting has like a little fold over bit I'm sure it'd be rather simple just to add some little bits in so I'm gonna have a go like this see how it works and I'll let you know how it goes. So I made the bunting, it came out super cute. Um, the only thing is, it's a little bit too long. Basically I did want to hang it like this across, but it's just gonna be like hanging so far. So I think I may put it like above. I think just trying to fit in Happy Halloween was too much. If I just written Halloween, it would have fitted in fine. So I'm gonna have another look at some more Halloween bunting. Um, the process I did was literally just to put glue on the back and lay it onto the string and it worked fine. Um, so this is not like time wasted because I can use that within my house, but I'm gonna look for some more bunting. Okay, so I've put the bunting on both of these now and I've still got that long one that says Happy Halloween. But basically I did spooky on this side and I was gonna print out like ghosts and pumpkins and bats and stuff and cut them out. Then I was thinking, what am I doing? I have a whole thing of Halloween confetti, which works just as well. Um, so on this one, I've put two little Halloween ghosts and the word spooky. And this one I've just gone for like pumpkin, ghost, pumpkin, ghost. I have also stuck the little gray bat in the middle here. Um, I think it works really well. I'm super pleased with the effect that that little gray bat has. I think it kind of really finishes the whole thing off and kind of ties it all together just because there are little bats on the end here. I think I may paint these bats gray. I'm not too sure just so it like fits all in. Um, I may do that and then I'm gonna go see if I have any clay um, to make like little um, pumpkins and things to put around and also a clock and maybe some little candles. Hi guys, so as you can see, it's very nearly midnight, um, so I think I'm going to probably have to call it a night. Um, but what I have done, basically, I went off and had a bath, I haven't just been doing this all day. Um, but I've just been kind of figuring out what I can put on my little um, mantel shelves. So I've got all of these things which I've made. Um, I was looking for my kind of air drying clay, but I couldn't find it, so I'm using... Um, a polymer clay. The only reason I don't like using this polymer clay is that you've got to bake it and if you don't cook it correctly um, or if you do it slightly wrong these just burn um, and they're ruined. So that's the only reason why I don't like using it is because so many times before I've done like I've baked it wrong and then I've ruined my complete thing and it's just been a big waste of time but it's the only clay that I had on me right now so I figured you know got to use what you got. So this is my spooky one. Um, I think I'm going to put this in like the casual sitting room. Um, so what I've got for this one is some like um, little candles. Of course I will be painting these and making them look a little bit more realistic but they're just literal like rolled into like a little blob and then a tiny bit of metal cut down stuck through so I'll be painting those once they come out. Um, I've also got a little pumpkin for this shelf um, and I've made a little ghost ornament. I'm not sure what else to put on the shelf I'm thinking maybe picture frames or something but I've left that as that for now. Oh yeah I do have chair I've got one more other thing. I made this. This is just like a little bowl kind of shape thing and I'm thinking of putting a 
a witch's ball in it, basically. So that was the first one. So as I said, I've got some little sets of candles to bake, um, a tiny little ghost kind of figure, um, a little pumpkin, um, a bowl, just a bit like a crystal ball in or something, um, or just some herbs or something. I'll see if I can use that. Um, a go have I showed you the ghost? On a ghost. Um, so that's what I made for the first one. Then I think I'm going to put this one more in the formal room. So what I've done is I've glued some little candlesticks on the top. Those again as just some beads and then one of these like thingy -ma bobby um, uh, what are they called? I remember what they called the other day. Treasury tag. So that's just the white bits are just a treasury tag cut pull the green bit and make it look like a wick. So I've got those and I glued this little skull bead on. Um, so for this one, I've got two little pumpkins to go up on there like this. And then I spent quite a while making a little clock to go in the middle. Now this doesn't look much like a clock because it doesn't have any of the fine details, but I've learned with this kind of clay, the best thing to do is to bake it and then paint on the details. But as you can see, it's like a coffin shaped clock. And then I've added a couple of pumpkins. And then that little bit there is gonna be a ghost once I've painted it. So hopefully that'll be okay. I was thinking for ages how I could make a spooky looking clock. Um, and then I was just trying to make a regular like mantel shelf clock and it looked like that and I was like oh I could make a coffin clock so hopefully that will turn out okay once it's painted so that's what I've done so far um so tomorrow I'm gonna cook those I'm gonna paint them um I think I'm gonna make some little like photo frames to go on the top um and then I'm not really sure what to do about this bottom bit whether or not I should put like things in the fireplace I may have a think about that um but what I do have somewhere so yeah, what I've got is a little battery and I've got this little bulb. Um, so if I put it in this way, obviously it's not gonna do anything, um, but if I put it this way, it kind of turns into like a little flickering lamp. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but it is like flickering like a fire. Um, so I'm gonna try and think of a way of adding this into my fireplace. I'm thinking maybe of putting some wood and just slotting this little battery in. I'm not sure how safe that will be, um, but obviously I can just have it set like this way if I want to, and if I make it so I can just turn this round and slot it back in that way, that's how I turn it on. Um, I'm not really sure of another way to do that, and that's, so I'm just gonna tidy up now and put all this leftover stuff in the bin, um, and then I'm gonna go to bed because I'm so tired, and I'll carry on in the morning. Okay, hello, good morning. Um, it's the next day. All I've done, basically while I was eating breakfast, was bake these um, little clay things. Um, this is a polymer clay, so I baked them for, I think it was 15 minutes on 120. I kept watching them, I kept looking in just to make sure that they hadn't burnt, because as I explained yesterday, I have made so many amazing things out of this clay, um, and then I've left it in too long and it's burnt. So I did that, and then I chucked them in a bowl of ice um, for 10 minutes just to make them really solid. So as you can hear, they're like, completely solid now they don't have any squish to them so they're ready to paint um, I always paint um, this kind of clay with um, acrylic paints so I will be using acrylic paints to paint these um, I'm really looking forward to making the little clock I have actually just printed off um, a tiny little clock face um, it is literally miniature um, so I'm going to paint these now with acrylic paints and then I'm going to work on the clock just because that's my favourite piece and I think that's going to be the most intricate when it comes to painting. So I've painted this little clock to go on the um, mantel shelf. As you can see, it's like a coffin kind of a shape. There's a little ghost and there's three little pumpkins. Um, it is still quite shiny just where it's gonna dry, um, but once it's dried, it will kind of go more of a matte color. So now I'm gonna cut out the little clock face and stick it on the front and hopefully, fingers crossed, it will look like a clock. Okay, so basically um, I'm gonna show you these bits, then I'm gonna clear this all off because there is paint everywhere. I absolutely hate acrylic paint. Um, I used to use it all the time, like religiously. The only thing I like it for now is painting clothes, but painting actual like 3D things, I just find so frustrating. But 
I'm going to show you these bits, then I'm going to clear this off, and hopefully they're going to be dry enough for me to put onto my little fireplaces. Um, and then I'm going to have a quick think about what I could put in the bottom, like, um, bit around the bottom of the fireplace. I'm going to get some wood to go into the fireplace, um, and then I think I'm pretty much done. I'm really sorry if this is a super long video, because um, I've been filming over the space of two days. I have no idea how long this has been, <laughs> so I'm sorry in advance. Um, but this is how the little clock turned out. I'm super pleased with it, I think it looks really cute. Um, it's obviously not the most realistic clock ever, but I think it works well. Um, and I'm very excited to put this onto the mantel shelf. And then I have made some little pumpkins. With these pumpkins, obviously the underneath of them was grey. Um, I painted over them with red and then I added an orange layer and then I added some brown to the middle um, stalks and then I just put a few kind of strokes of brown around it just to give them a bit more kind of realism just because pumpkins aren't just orange. Um, I've got these two sets of candles. Um, I did originally want them to be white but they ended up being kind of reds and orange colours. They're quite rough but I don't really mind, I just wanted them to look like melty kind of candles and I painted the little metal bits that I stuck in them black so they looked like burnt wicks. Um, I've got this little brown bowl which I'm planning to put a little crystal ball in. Um, so again I've just painted that brown so that it looks like it was made of wood um, but hopefully it'll fit in there, I haven't tried it out yet. Uh, and then finally I did this little ghost which again I just painted white and then um, I had actually made some holes for the eyes but I decided to add some black paint into the holes just to make them stand out a bit more. So those are the pieces which I made out of the polymer clay. So as I said I'm going to clear this all up now, put this paper in the bin just because everywhere I seem to put my hands I just get covered in paint. The postman just came and bought me my other fireplace, um, which I ordered because I did, um, I ordered two, but then I realised that I needed three. Um, so I ordered a third one on Sunday and it arrived today, which is Tuesday. So um, I was really pleased with how quickly it arrived. Um, it's like very typical that I've spent all this time decorating two of them and now the third one has just arrived. But I probably won't be decorating the third one just for a little while. Um, not because I get bored, but because I like to just try out new things and I don't like to do the same thing too many times in a row. So I definitely will be doing that one. Um, I probably won't have decorated it on camera just because you guys know now the whole process it's taken me to decorate this one. So yeah, I'm just gonna clear this all up and go get some more paper. Okay, so I just went outside and I just found some bark on the floor, so I got a few different pieces, um, and I got this stick. <laughs> Literally, I just found this around the bottom of the trees. I think right now is a great time of year to be collecting bark. Um, but I figured I'd just break this up and put it into, like, if I break it into small pieces, I can get, like, little bits like that. Just put it in so it looks like there's some wood in the fireplace. Okay, so I stuck all the bits on the top of there, I used PVA glue, um, I've put the little crystal ball in, so now there's basically two more things I'm going to do. Oh, I've also put the wood in there, um, and I've moved this little thing, so hopefully when I want to turn it on, she says, she can just slide it over the battery. This is definitely not the most effective way of doing this, I have to say. Um, but then I can have my little fire going in there. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure about that still. Um, but that's that. Um, and when I want to turn it off, I can just move it to there. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've done. The wood, I hardly needed any at all. So I think what I'm going to do is just focus on how I can add some bits so I would really like <laughs> to put some little picture frames so I'm going to look up um, a tutorial online how to make picture frames and also if I just move you up a little bit to the screen um, I've been looking at little tools that go in fireplaces and there's like a little brush like a little dustpan um, and there's a poker so I'm going to see if I can make those I was thinking of just using that like wire stuff that I was using yesterday where so I'll have a little go at making these I think I'm just literally going to be cutting lengths of this wire um, and then using like a silver tape to make like the handle and stuff so I'm not going to go too detailed just because they're going to be very very tiny and then finally I'm just going to make a picture frame just one to go on this fireplace mm -hmm. 
So I made these little tools to go in here. Um, I've made two lots. So there's one on the other side. It was a combination of using a baking tray and this silver. It is like a metal, it's like a silver metal tape. It's very weird. Um, when you peel it off, it feels like it could be tin foil. So you could possibly do this with tin foil as well. But basically I got bits of wire um, and added bits to the ends. So I've made three for each fireplace. So this one is just like a little poker and um, they each have like a little handle. So I've got a little poker. Um, this one which is like a little pan. Again, this bit's just made out of a baking tray and then I've put the silver tape around the end to make a little handle. Um, and then I've got a little brush for the pan as well. The way I did this with the brush is um, I took a paint brush, I just got like a regular old plastic one, um, they're kind of relatively cheap, you can get like 50 for a pound online. Um, I took the the silver tape, so just imagine this bit was the silver tape, I stuck it down like that and then I cut the end off and it stuck all of the ends together. Um, and it made the little brush effect so it is kind of like a realistic brush um, again with a little handle those three little bits that can go into the fireplace and as I said I did make enough to go in both fireplaces so now I'm gonna have a little think about how I can make um, a picture frame to go on top of this one because we've got this like random little gap here Okay, so since last time I saw you, all I've really done is I've glued down this little jar. I filled it with tiny little, um, that actually left over from my diamond painting. There's always like some stuff left over. So I filled them with tiny little dots. I thought maybe they could almost look like little fire starter coal kind of things. Um, and I made these two little bowls. Um, I just literally made them out of the baking tray. So I just cut a strip off, put it in a circle, um, and I just used the tape just to tape it together. Um, I put some wood in. I'm going to go get some like twigs and stuff from the garden just so I can make more like logs. A bit of a wind coming in at the moment from, I've got a window like directly behind these so hopefully they're not gonna fall over but the last thing I wanted to do for this was make a little picture frame. I did look up some ways which you can make a picture frame um, and they were all relatively complex and I had this idea, I was hoping maybe it would work so I'm going to give it a try. So basically I've got a bit of cardboard here um, and I've printed out a little picture of my cat um, and then a picture of a, um, a frame. So I'm just going to cut this out and stick it onto the cardboard. Hopefully the cardboard won't be too thick. Now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking maybe I need to squash it down a little bit and then basically stick this picture of the cat behind the cardboard. I'm hoping that will give it a 3D effect. So I did it, um, I did it how I thought I was going to do it, I just stuck it on some card, I used some slightly thinner card in the end, um, when I printed out the details um, of the actual frame that I was using didn't really show up so I just used a black pen to show those and then I stuck a little thing on the back just so it stands up and that's really cute. So I think that is pretty much everything I needed to make. I am very excited because we've been having a massive heat wave and if I bring you this way, you should be able to see that we're having a bit of a storm going on at the moment, which is very nice. Um, it's literally been so hot in England, so I think I'm going to go dance in the rain, um, and then I'm going to come back, glue everything down, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so it's stopped raining, so hopefully it will stay stopped raining while I film this, because this will literally crumble <laughs> if it gets wet. Um, but here are my two little um, fireplaces. I'm sitting on the stairs, so I'm a bit, bit of a weird angle right now. Um, but I'll just show you them up close now that they're finished. So we've got this one. This one will be going in the more formal room, so I've got two candlesticks couple of pumpkins, a skull, and then we've got this clock that I've made. Really pleased with how the clock came out. I think it works really well. Um, we've then got the ghost and the pumpkin bunting, then the fireplace itself. I did have that little um, lamp, like light bulb thing flickering in there, 
with the battery but I figured it's probably not the safest thing and the last thing I want to do is catch everything on fire so I've just taken that out for now maybe I'll just keep it to use if I'm like just shoving someone in person um, but that's basically what it looks like I've got this little pot of um, like bits of wood on the side and then my tools are down there um, and there's a little spider and then we've got the two little bats on the ends and then the bottom half of this one's pretty much the same other than, other than the fact that it's kind of opposite way around and instead of the spider it has um, a little kind of glass bottle of coal or something or other um, and then going up it has the spooky banner with the two little ghosts and then we've got this one's a little bit more informal there's a couple of like melty candles a pumpkin a ghost ornament a little witch's ball and then the picture of my cat which is oddly enough taken just there <laughs> and the cat has decided to come and join us up here in his very famous position for his glorious pose that we used in that photo kitten okay, okay good night so I'm really pleased with how these turned out. I'm very excited to put them into my little doll's house. Um, as I said, my other one did arrive today, so I have got another one to decorate. It's gonna be kind of sideways like this, which is a little bit of a shame because you won't see all the details, but hopefully when people look in the rooms, they'll be able to sort of see it enough to kind of get the full picture. I'm just using my phone like torch so that I can show you but this is how they fit into the house. I am so pleased with how that looks. I think that looks really cute and I'm actually pre like pleasantly surprised how much of the details you can actually see. And then on the other side if I just bring it over, I know I haven't like actually decorated this room but again you can see that it fits in really nicely and I feel like they both really fit with like the themes like this is going to be like a very comfy room and this one's going to be a bit more formal. But that is is how I made my two little fireplaces. I'm sorry that it took so long um, to film. As I said, it was over a course of two days and there was a lot of trial and error, but I'm really, really pleased with how they turned out. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. If you have any other ideas for crafty bits for my doll's house, I would very, very much appreciate it. Any tips or tricks or any ideas at all. So thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. If it's sunny where you are, I hope you're enjoying the shade and I'll see you next time. Bye.